Yeah, so uh, despite my, my jab at generative AI earlier, <laughs> nobody's talking about the intersection of generative AI and blockchain, which I think is really interesting, and here's, here's why. So, if you think about generative AI, and this is a gross simplification, but the quality of those products and services are generally gonna be determined by two things. One is the access to data that those, those products and services have, which is why you're seeing companies like Reddit saying publicly, hey, you know, all these gen AI companies and tools, you can't scrape Reddit, you gotta pay us for the data. So access to data is gonna be a key differentiator. Second is, you know, quality of the large language model or the, the tech itself, right? And I think one of the Achilles heels of the modern financial services and fintech ecosystem is data is still very siloed, fragmented, inconsistent across currencies, geographies, payment methods, whatever. And so if you think about like Gen AI, you can have the best LLM and the best coding, but if the data is not readily available, is inconsistent, isn't linked, you're probably not gonna have a good product or service, right? It's gonna be flying blind, essentially, or with a very limited scope. And so I think blockchain and crypto gets interesting is you know, for better or worse, most of the major digital assets and blockchains are public, and it's a single ledger, and so it's a single pool of data. So hypothetically, you would think that the more financial services, products, and services that are built on publicly available ledgers and where that data is contained on those ledgers, which can then be leveraged by Gen AI tools to deliver cool things for business or businesses or consumers or whatever, those products and services might be better using that data available on the blockchain because it's, again, more fulsome, more complete, um, it's available to everybody, versus like trying to build that same Gen AI, AI product or service and integrating it into like 15 or 20 or 30 different data sources that are all different. Yeah, so the biggest news for WorldPay and for anybody that kind of follows FinTech in the payment space is uh, we're being spun off by our parent company, FIS. So they acquired us three and a half years ago. Um, the board and our executive team have made the decision to separate the two companies. That should complete, you know, later this year, early next year. Um, so I think that's going to be the biggest change in our trajectory as a company. You know, we're going to go from being a, one of three business units within FIS to being our own public company, which we actually were before FIS bought us. So I think that brings, um, you know, like any change, a lot of exciting opportunities that may mean we're able to uh, accelerate some of our product development, accelerate some of our international expansion, potentially be more creative with our capital structure and looking at things like M&A and uh, investment and stuff like that. So I'm really excited for that next chapter in the company's history. Obviously a lot of wood to chop between now and then, but I think it'll open some uh, interesting opportunities for us. And I think as it relates to crypto and Web3, you know, we've been in this space for 10 years. Our management team has always been, you know, very supportive. I think we continue to keep an eye on things like the regulatory landscape, the technology as it evolves, but if anything, crypto has shown us that it changes quick. And so I'm looking forward to kind of seeing, you know, what's going on over the next 12 to 18 months and hopefully we'll be there. <laughs>